Hi everyone, my name is Hao Ren. Today I'm going to present our work, which is an intelligent fine-grained resource management framework for SLO-oriented cloud microservices called Firm. This is a joint work with Shubo and Sorab in the Deepend Research Group and our advisor, Professor Ayer and Professor Kabarchik. So let's get started. Today, microservices are gaining popularity rapidly and its adopters are enjoying considerable success, including big companies such as Netflix and Amazon. Unlike monolithic designs, microservices typically consist of a set of loosely coupled, self-concerned individual services, which can be independently developed, deployed, and maintained. But they work together, communicating through web APIs or message queues to accomplish common tasks. This architecture brings several advantages, such as scalability, fault isolation, and flexibility on the choice of languages or libraries in use. The figure is only a simple example. But in reality, the scale and the complexity of microservices are increasing. For example, Uber in 2019 has over 1,000 microservices. Typically, the performance of microservices are guarded by service level objectives defined by the service owners. Failure to maintain SLOs may lead to severe financial loss, especially for those user facing services. For example, 100 milliseconds increase in latency converted to a $0.7 billion loss in Amazon sales just in one quarter. However, achieving performance predictability in microservices is hard. First, the increasing scale and the complicated inter-microservice dependencies lead to cascading SLO violations. Therefore, it's difficult to isolate root causes of SLO violations. Second, traditional approaches fail to multiplex resources at the lower level and thus may not reduce SLO violations. Microservices are typically deployed in containers. The figure on the left-hand side shows, uh, although my containers provide isolated runtime environments for applications inside, there is still interference over less level cache, main memory, or IO devices, as containers coexist on the same host machine. On the right-hand side, it shows Kubernetes is unable to reduce the tail latency spikes arising from contention for a shared resource like memory bandwidth, as its auto-scaling algorithms are built using heuristics that only monitor CPU utilization, which does not really change during the latency spike. Third, it's difficult to generate workload-specific policies to mitigate SLO violations in large-scale microservices deployment. To capture low-level resource contention, Building high fidelity performance models and related scheduling heuristics require significant human effort and training. Further, frequent microservice updates and migrations can lead to recurring human expert driven engineer effort for model reconstruction. To address those challenges, we present FIRM, which is a two level machine learning based resource management framework to balance shared resources among microservices at a finer granularity. It reduces resource contention, thus increased performance isolation and resource utilization. More specifically, it addresses the first challenge by detecting and isolating SLO violations to individual microservices with an SVM-based state inference model. And it then addresses the last two challenges by estimating resources in contention and dynamically resource reprobation through reinforcement learning. This two-level ML architecture improves the interpretability as the SVM isolates the problem. It also saves training time as the IR agent only focuses on taking actions to maximize performance. Firm is implemented on top of Kubernetes. It takes measurements from the Kubernetes cluster, including application-level metrics, performance metrics, as well as container-level resource metrics. It then performs resource reprobation actions on worker nodes. Combining the two, it provides a closed feedback loop for automatic scheduling policy learning. We deploy Firm on a 15 node Kubernetes cluster, and Firm outperforms Kubernetes auto scaling by up to 16 times in reducing SLO violations. Before we go into details, I'd like to first present the insights we found in characterization of microservice benchmarks and used to design Firm. First, a critical path is defined to be the longest path in execution of the request. Thus, detection of critical path helps reveal the bottleneck of performance. Recent approaches have explored static identification of critical path 
based on historic data and have built heuristics to enable auto scaling to minimize the latency of the critical path. However, we found this is not enough. The critical path on serving the request is not static. Instead, it is dynamically changed based on the performance of individual microservice instances. It could change because the same microservice undergoes different types of shared resource contention, or different microservices have different degree of sensitivity to the same type of inter interference. On the right-hand side, these four figures show the evolution of critical path under injection of resource contention in four different microservice benchmarks. We observe as much as 1.3 to 2 times difference in tail latency. Therefore, it's important to capture the critical path change at runtime and make runtime decisions. Second, it's important to find the microservices responsible for the SLO violation to mitigate them. While it's clear that such microservices will always lie on the critical path, it's less clear which individual service on the critical path is responsible for the violation. A common heuristic is to pick the one with the highest latency. However, this rarely leads to the optimal solution. Consider this figure. The left one shows the CDF of latencies for the compose and the text services on the critical path on the composing post request in social network benchmark. The compose service has higher median or mean latency, while the text service has higher variance. Now, although compose service contributes a larger portion of the total latency, it does not benefit from scaling as it does not have resource contention. This behavior is shown in the right figure, which shows the end to end latency for the original configuration, as well as each of the two microservices are scaled from a single to two containers. Hence, Scaling microservices with higher variance provides better performance gain. Based on the insight that resource contention manifests as dynamically evolving critical path, firm detects critical path changes and extracts critical microservice instances from them. The first step is to obtain real-time observability. Distributed tracing is a method used to profile and monitor microservice-based applications to pinpoint causes of the root per performance. With instrumentation from the microservices, it gains the knowledge of parent-child relationships among services. After execution, a generated trace then captures the work done by each service, which is called spans, along request execution path. It follows the execution route and the request across microservice instances and records time, local profile information, and RPC calls. The figure shows the microservice deployment and the service dependency graphs. Each yellow rectangle is a microservice instance running inside a container. The orange square is the tracing agent instrumented into each microservice. The tracing agent is a stateless replicable data processing component that collects traces from each tracing agent, combines them, and stores in a graph database. The learning of firm's SVM model and the IO agent consumes a large set of training data. We accelerate the training through performance normally injections which allows us to quickly span the space of adverse resource contention behavior. That is important as real-world workloads might not experience all adverse situations within a short training time. We implemented a performance anomaly injector in which the type of anomaly, injection target, time, duration, and intensity are all configurable. Therefore, the labeled data set is automatically available for SVM training as the injection targets are predetermined in the injection campaign files. Firm detects SLO violations and narrows down the problem via critical path analysis, which is essentially to find the longest path in the traces. Then given the individual latency vector TI and the end-to-end -end latency vector T critical path, firms calculate the per critical path and the per instance features to fit into the SVM and get binary decisions. More specifically, we use Relative importance to represent per critical path variability, which is defined as the Pearson correlation coefficient between the two vectors. The resulting statistics is known as the variance explained. Intuitively, it means which instance contributes the most to the variance of the end to end latency. We then use congestion intensity to represent per instance variability, which is defined as the ratio of the 99th percentile latency to the median latency. 
Here, we choose the 99 instead of the 70 or 80th percentile to target the tail of latency behavior. The chosen ratio explains per instance variability by capturing the congestion level of the request queue so that it can be used to determine whether it's necessary to scale. A higher ratio means that the microservice can only handle a subset of the request, but the requests of the tail are suffering from the congestion issues in the queue. On the other hand, microservices with lower ratios handle most requests normally, so scaling does not help with performance gain. Consequently, microservice instances with higher ratios have a greater micro uh, opportunity to achieve performance gains in terms of tail latency by taking scale out or reprovisioning the actions. Firm's mitigation mechanism was designed based on the inside that SLO violation mitigation policies vary with applications and systems. There are two common ways of mitigating resource contentions that are to scale out by spinning up a new instance of the container on another node in the cluster, or scale up by providing more resources to the container. You can either explicitly partition your resources, for example, in the case of memory bandwidth or last level cache, or you can grant more resources to an already deployed container of the microservice, for example, in terms of CPU cores. Recent approaches address this problem by building static policies or modeling performance. For example, AIMD method for controlling resource limits and the rule or heuristics based scaling based on the profiling of historic data about the workloads. However, we found in our experiments with the four microservice benchmarks that such static policies are not well suited for dealing with latency critical workloads because the optimal policy must incorporate dynamic contextual information. The very with applications, user load, and the types of the resources in contention. For example, in the top two figures about the social network application, at 500 requests per second, scale up has a better payoff than scale out for both memory and CPU bound workloads. However, at 1500 requests per second, scale out dominates for CPU and scale up dominates for memory. This behavior is application dependent because the trade off curve inflection points change across applications, as illustrated in the bottom two figures for train tag and booking applications. As efficient resource schedulers need to take manufacturers into account and require good understanding of the system and the workloads, it becomes even extractable as microservices are frequently updated. Because of the complexity and the potential efficiency improvement on the table, there has been a huge body of prior work and human ingenuity going to this domain that each targets a specific aspect of the scheduling problem. As a result, there isn't really a fixed one-size-fits-all algorithm that performs optimally in all scenarios. The optimal solution really depends on the specific workload and the system it is deployed on. Then the reality is, we usually have to do a lot of tweaking, testing, and tuning of parameters to get things to work as expected. And the whole process just repeats and repeats if we face a new problem or the workload changes. Therefore, centered around our research, we ask, can we use machine learning to help taming the complexity of building an optimal scheduler that can provision the right amount of resources at the right time? And the answer is yes. So reinforcement learning is learning in the form of loops, how to map situations to actions as the policy so that a numerical reward is maximized. And in firm, we leverage reinforcement learning to first identify low level resource contention and then estimates the right amount of to resources to probation. It takes the input from the critical instance extraction and uses application level performance metrics as well as container level resource usage measurements at the states and then generate actions based on the learned policies. Let's take a closer look. The RL agent learns to make provisioning decisions directly from experience. What does this mean? In each time step T, the agent gets the state ST and performs actions AT to the microservices managed by it. The actions are then evaluated by the reward function RT. This reward function acts as the loss function to point the RL agent to the right direction. The reward function is defined as this. It basically consists of two parts. The first part means to mitigate SLO violations fast. SMT is the SLO maintenance at time T, 
and it's defined as the SLO latency divided by the current latency. Lower value means worse performance degradation. And the second part is to avoid over-provisioning. It's defined as the resource utilization at time t divided by the assigned resource limit at the time t. Higher value means high resource utilization efficiency and the less over-provisioning. The training of a firm's two-level ML model relies on the workload generators and the anomaly injector. As microservice benchmarks are deployed in containers uh, in the Kubernetes cluster, all services are driven by workload generators, which send requests to gateways. Resource contention is artificially created by anomaly injectors. First, firm's SVM model are trained by taking the feature data X collected from the cluster and then takes the label Y from the anomaly injector. Then firm's RIO agents are trained driven by the anomaly injection as well. By using the closed feedback loop provided by firm, the agent learns the best mitigation policy by interacting with the environment. RIO training proceeds in episodes. Upon convergence, the reward achieved by the RIO agent will be steady. And accordingly, the mitigation performance also converges. For every 200 episodes, we take the checkpoints learned by the RIO agent and evaluated the SLO violation mitigation time using the saved checkpoint. As the figure shows, at the first few hundred episodes, the IO agent performs badly and is even worse than the Kubernetes auto scaling method. But as train proceeds, it outperforms the IMD based method by nine times. We implemented and deployed firm on a Kubernetes cluster of 50 physical nodes. We run four microservice benchmarks separately from the popular benchmark tools, Death Star Bench, and Train Tickets, driven by open loop workload generators. As previously mentioned, our training and experiments are driven by performance normal injection. And our comparison targets, including Kubernetes auto scaling and an AIB based method. As I mentioned in the previous slides, firm reduces SLO validation mitigation time by up to nine times compared with AIMD. Breaking it up, it reduces the average tail latency by up to six to 11 times, while reducing the overall average requested CPU limit by 29 to 62%. In the meantime, it reduces the number of dropped or timeout requests by up to eight times. To conclude, firm first localized the, the, the runtime the root cause microservice instances for SLO violation by using SVM-based critical component extraction. It then uses RL to generate workload-specific mitigation policies, which are optimized to estimate low-level resources in contention and provide reprobation actions. This two-level ML model structure of firm improves interpretability and significantly saves training time. Through evaluation, firm outperforms traditional AIMD-based method and Kubernetes auto scaling method. So this is the end of my presentation. Check out our full paper for more details of the work. Thank you.